how exactly do I set up my Warbonnet Ridge Runner hammock? Stick around, let's find out. What is happening everyone? Rob here, R. Pelton One. Thanks so much for tuning in, I greatly appreciate it. If you really like hammock, camping videos, backpacking videos, outdoor adventure videos, and outdoor gear and gadget review videos, Consider subscribing right down there so you don't miss a thing. But today we're talking about my War Bonnet Ridge Runner hammock. How exactly do I set this thing up? I'm gonna take you through a step-by-step -step process of how I do it and the things that I think about while setting all the stuff up. And on my stuff sack, it's a double-ended stuff sack. On one end, I tied just a little red cordage. This red signifies the head end, red for the head end. Pretty simple, right? Pull off the straps and get ready to rock. Once I decide which tree that I want my head end at, walk up to the tree and about head height is where I'm gonna put the first strap. Now these particular straps are made by Dutchware gear. It's a Dyneema webbing with a sewn on Dutch buckle. Simple, no moving parts, stays on there forever. Now once that is done, I'll open up the other end of my stuff sack, get the buckle and suspension all out because it's already attached to it. Now my tree selection is a minimum of 15 feet apart. Minimum, because my tarp is 13 feet, that'll give me a little room to play with. And now I'm just gonna walk it out, letting it spool out of the stuff sack. And as far as your Dutch buckle, it doesn't matter if it's upside down or right side up, it's completely fine. Now the Ridge Runner has a very specific way it needs to lay, basically with the bug net facing up. And also because of these two separate suspension lines, these are called dog bones. Sometimes they'll get twisted. And that's okay, just twist them, and it'll cause your suspension to twist, no big deal. Just untwist it, lay it flat, and it'll be just fine. So once all that is done, take your stuff sack and slide it off the hammock on one end or the other, it really doesn't matter. Slide it all the way up past the buckle on your suspension. And once past the buckle, cinch it down so it doesn't come riding down. So at this point, the hammock is hanging fairly low and you're gonna want to initially raise it up but don't do that yet, because once you put the spreader bars on, it's gonna raise the hammock by itself. So it's okay if the hammock starts low and close to the ground. Now, the spreader bars. You get two sets. You get a skinnier set for the foot end, a thicker set for the head end. Now these are aftermarket carbon fiber spreader poles, super light, super strong. These are made by Rhoda Lacura. If you want information on these, I'll leave a link to where you can get them down in the description. But the stock ones you get with this hammock, I believe has a three piece head end and a two piece foot end. It's very simple. The little pin goes in the hole, spread it out, and it goes in the other way. That's it for the foot end, super simple. Now the head end is just a little bit different and I'll show you why. Right in the middle of the hammock is this little shock corded loop right here. The pole is to go through this loop first. That's just to keep your head end up and supported. And then after that, it's putting the pin in the hole, spreading it, and that's done. So here's a look at the hammock from afar without the spreader bars installed. When I said it's okay for the hammock to start low to the ground, I'll show you exactly why. Because once you put these in, it's gonna raise quite a bit. Check it out. Look how high that got. It's above my stomach. That's not gonna be at a height that you wanna sleep in or even sit in for that matter. So now I gotta adjust suspension. The two separate dog bones coming off of the hammock, I have permanently hitched to this pinkish red continuous loop, which I also hitched permanently to the beetle buckle itself. That way this whole system stays attached to the hammock full time, I never ever take it off. Now, in order to tighten up the hammock, to raise it, put your thumb down towards the bottom part of the, of the buckle, 
put your fingers on these two tabs here, turn it 90 degrees to the strap, and then you pull this top strap, just like that. Now to loosen it, you do it basically the opposite. Turn it 90 degrees, now pull down on the buckle, and that will loosen it. Now, truth be told, these straps were slipping on me this season. I don't know why, it's been a giant pain in the butt. I've addressed the issue, the slippage issue, with Dutch Wear Gear. They're working on it to see what happened. I haven't heard back from them yet, but we shall see. But for now, I have to put what is called the slippery half hitch on here, where I basically loop it around, tighten it all the way down like this, and that right there is what's preventing it from slipping right now. Kind of a pain, but you gotta do what you gotta do. That's how I adjust this suspension. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this to where I think it needs to go. I do notice that my foot end is a little shorter than my head end, so I'm gonna go ahead and lower it from that end to create an equal distance in between the trees. There, that looks pretty good. Now the angle I'm looking for for those straps is about 20 to 25 degrees, not 30 degrees like a gathered end hammock. This is a bridge, it's designed to lay flatter, which means you, get, you need a flatter angle. About 20, 25 degrees is what you're looking for. All right, now I realize I have some bungees here that I need to connect on both sides. I don't do that just yet. Before I do that, I flip the whole hammock over, and this is how I'm gonna put on my under quilt. Super nice, because you got a work area, a bench that you can work on. You figure out which part of this is the head end, which part is the foot end, and then you attach from there. So one thing that you'll notice about this Lynx under quilt, there's two sides to it, obviously. So which side is facing outward, which side is facing inward. Right here, this is a nice billowy side. If you flip it over, and see the underside? It's a lot flatter. This flat side is what goes against the hammock. The billowy, puffy side goes to the exterior. The head end is generally wider than the foot end, so you just have to make sure that you put the proper ends of the under quilt on the right end. Or we're simply just gonna attach it with these carabiners. You'll see on this little buckle where the spreader bar comes in, there's a little loop right here that holds the buckle and that's exactly where the carabiner is gonna attach. So let's pull the carabiner, goes right through there. That's it, you're done. That is the easiest under quilt setup you will ever see. And then you basically just do that all the way around. You just flip it over. Under quilt is done. Simple, easy, effective. Now, as far as the shot cord, for the bug net to hold the bug net up the foot end won't be as high as the head end so i just simply connect this right to the head of the suspension now on the head end since this has to go higher i'm actually going to attach this to the tree just above the hammock suspension now you are able to adjust the tension and the height so if it's loose Simply just pull it, it'll keep this thing up. Now these little locks aren't that strong, so I put another one of those slippery half hitches in here, just kind of lock it down. But that's it, that keeps that bug net off your face. Now that's a properly set up war bonnet ridge runner hammock. You got the bug net taut, sloping up towards your face to keep it up out of your face. Saddle bags are hanging free under quilt lofting up perfectly to give you that warmth you need for tonight's slumber. Once you're ready to sit in it and lay down, make sure you open up your bug net really, really wide. Otherwise you might risk sitting on the bug net, maybe tearing it. Oh, also make sure your foot end is a little higher than your head end. That'll prevent your feet from slipping beyond the under quilt resulting in chilly feet. But this is the perfect sleeping hammock. If you like this video, you like outdoor adventure videos, outdoor gear, gadget review videos, consider subscribing right down there so you don't miss a thing. I'll also post a couple more vids right over there for you to check out. I also have an Instagram account where I post a lot of the pictures of the trips I go on and you can follow me on Instagram right up here.
I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for watching. Be sure to get out and enjoy this big, beautiful world. And I'll see you on the next one.